Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where I'm going to be showing you some tips and techniques of how to draw woolly fur. Before we get into this video though, if you do want to follow along in real time and have instruction as you're working on this with a demo as well, a little reference photo, then there is now a fur foundation library available over on my website. It's a new subscription platform that I've introduced alongside my club Puffin One for £5 per month and it gains access to just the fur library so if you're looking to just enhance your fur work not really interested in wildlife then that's going to be for you i'm going to leave the link in the description below because it's just launched today so you can be one of the first to go and get your paws on that so that's all i have to say before we get into this one now let's get into the quick demo for those of you that aren't interested in full length tutorials. The first thing I'm doing here is mapping out all of the different clumps of the wool type fur. So I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm identifying where there are any areas of shadows and I'm looking at the shapes and everything that those shadows are making and I'm just gently adding those in with a walnut brown pencil. Whatever pencil you use will be determined by the colour of the wool that you're working on but generally you want to use a darker toned pencil so you don't want to go in with like a base layer like a base tone pencil like a warm grey one or something like that. Make sure that you're using quite a dark pencil so that when you do add your lighter tones and your mid tones that those darker areas are still visible. So as you can see here I've got some darker patches I've just kind of roughed out the shapes and the areas of where all of these different clumps of wool are actually sitting here. I've then gone in with my base tone which was an ivory here. The colour of the wool here is kind of like an apricot, like orangey type fur. There's actually one um, a reference photo from Pixabay that I used of a llama for this one. I'm then adding in my secondary base tone. again. The colours here don't matter but for this instance I'm using a light flesh to go back over and it's just going to help to add a few more layers to that base so there's no paper white showing through and it just gives a really nice base for your further colour pencil work to go on top. Now with woolly fur the technique here you don't really want to add in any fur lines so we're going to be using a lot of shading. And you want to make sure that you use really light pressure and you shade back and forth and really slowly build the depth of colour and that saturation of colour on your paper surface. You can go in with a heavy hand and start to add it down straight away but you don't tend to get the depth that you get from layering up your pencils like this. So as you can see what I'm doing here, I've got the, the base down all over the area that I'm working. And then I'm coming into these small individual sections where I have kind of roughed out the clumps beforehand with my darker pencil and I'm just gently adding in all of these colours and layers in clump by clump so I'm going area by area. What I'm doing is adding in some mid-tones because those base layers are already there and then I'm going in and slightly darkening the shadows and blending the shadows out into the lighter area of the wool texture as well. You can see what I'm doing now with my orange pencil I'm just kind of really gently using it to add down any shadows onto the wool texture using it really really lightly and then I'm also going in with some darker colours as well to help blend those shadows out and the kind of way that I'm using the pencil here isn't necessarily just back and forth shading because that will just create some kind of thick uh, long type fur. I'm kind of also using my pencil and making squiggles like kind of S shapes and really overlapping the lines as well. That's going to really help to add that kind of rough texture to the woolly fur. So when I'm going in with the mid-tones, I'm using the mid-tones over the darker areas because that's going to help to build a really nice dark tone. I've added in the base layer the dark tone where I initially mapped out everything and then going in with the mid-tones and then I'm, as I'm building those mid-tones to the darker areas and then going back in with the darker pencils once again. So doing that will just help to ensure that those shadow areas are really nice and rich and they're really nice and slick and you've got like loads of layers down there. And also by adding those mid-tones into your darker shadows it's going to allow you to blend your mid-tones into the lighter areas a little bit more so you're going to get that really nice trans transition between the two areas. So in essence the whole kind of technique for this is purely mapping out everything beforehand with a darker pencil then going in with your lighter tones and then building your way back up to your darker tones and also just working clump by clump so little area by little area. 
I also like to take a lighter tone pencil so some of those base tones and do a little bit of blending just to soften everything out and then on top of that to get that kind of rough looking texture I then use the darker pencils and use that kind of squiggly line method that I was um, talking about just now to add a few little areas of detail and just kind of make it look a little bit more rough a little bit more wiry that kind of thing so you don't want to end up blending with your lighter pencils and having a really nice smooth area you can have that if you do have on your reference photo something that looks a little smoother like as if it's been almost brushed out or it's kind of like really oily or waxy or that kind of thing but generally fur like this tends to be quite rough looking and you kind of get these overlapping hairs that are running wild and uh, they're usually dark in colour and lighter in colour so I do actually at the end of this go in with a white pencil as well and add some little lighter strands coming up over the top but generally te things tend to not be really nice and smooth and blended so you want to try and avoid blending too much with your lighter pencils and just kind of let the roughness of the pencils do the work for you with this particular texture but yeah the essence of this is just putting down your darker areas really mapping in those shadows really identifying the shapes of all of the clumps and how they're lying also the direction that the wool is laying will determine where your shadows are so in this case you can see it's coming from slight to the bottom left and kind of coming up to the top right so all of my clumps and my shadows are kind of moving in that direction so you want to take note of the direction that the wool is actually going make sure you shade in that direction and add in all of your little wiggly lines in that direction as well otherwise you're going to end up with a hot mess on your hands and it's not going to look too much like wool but that's the essence of woolly fur there's not really any other technique to add to this uh, as you can see i'm just slowly building in the mid-tones building in some shadows around the clumps of all of these areas as i said I can find the clumps easily because I've previously defined them with a darker pencil so all I'm doing is going over with my mid-tones over those dark areas really defining them and getting them really nice and dark so they blend into the lighter areas as well uh, lifting the pressure uh, off as I work from those shadows into the lighter areas and just making sure that I'm working in light layers all over and not really using uh, too much pressure um, in one go to add the saturation of the colour down so the saturation of the colour here is being added just by lots and lots of layers really working the shading method and those wiggly lines close to one another to try and get a nice saturation of colour so that's pretty much it for this tutorial if again you want to follow in real time and draw along with me with a reference photo and we can do everything in real time then you can hop on over to my website and sign up for the fur foundation library which is brand new as i said launched today and it's five pound in price if you want to hop along there you can also sign up to club puffin which includes all the wildlife tutorials as well or to patreon either of those options are available to you as well but i just thought i'd mention the fur foundation fur foundation library as it's brand new today and it's just about fur and i know there are some people that just want to work on pet portraits and that kind of thing anyway thank you so much for watching if you've liked this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and i'll catch you guys in the next one bye